Hello, welcome to another video. Today, I'm gonna to tell you about five fonts that I love that isn't Futura. If you follow my work for some times, you know I love Futura, but I swear to you in this, in this video, I will not mention Futura once, even though I've said Futura at least five times already, but let's get into it. First on our list is Brush script by the American Type Founders Collection. It's funny when I looked up what foundry this is from, it's from the American Type Found Founders Collection, which is basically they're all about recreating fonts from, from before, from the old days, before computers, when fonts were actually metal metal things that people love to say. Like, actually, it's a typeface because a font is a metal, a metal piece of letter where all of the letters are on there. Like, shut up. Okay, I don't care. I'm gonna call them fonts, okay? Let's just get that out of the way. I'm calling them fonts. I don't care what your design teacher said. I don't give a heck what he said. You could tell him Overset Text said that. Tell your professor, if you're in design school right now, Overset Text, famed internet graphic designer, Overset Text said, whatever you're saying, teacher, whatever you're saying, prof, he doesn't care. He doesn't care, he doesn't care. Tell him that, show him this clip. Tell him that I give him a piece of my mind. Anyways, <laughs> They're all about recreating old fonts and I love that. You know what I love about Brush Script is that it looks like a font that you would see in the wild. And you know me, I love fonts that normal people use, non-graphic designers use, or that is just commonplace in a lot of places. Commonplace in a lot of places. What does that even mean? A lot of people actually hate this font because of how overused it is in signage, but that is why I love it because my work appeals to normal people. <laughs> I'm not trying to appeal to graphic designers as much as I like. I like to appeal to the everyday man. That is why I like using fonts that you might have seen, that you might know. And this is also the Design Miss uh, logo font. It is a font that everybody could kind of recognize and gives it that nice vintage feel, like something that is from like the 50s that you would see on a ice cream shop or some shit. And you actually still see this in the wild a lot. And I love it each time I see it. It is technically a script, but the thing about script fonts is, is most of them suck. Not, not, there's not a lot of script fonts that are good. And the thing about this font is that it is legible. It is very legible. The thing about British script fonts is that they're not that legible and it just, it just, I don't like it. Okay, I know, I know not a lot, not every font, not every type needs to be legible. Well, most of them, most of them do. Because usually sometimes you need to convey ideas with words. And I like my words to be read. And sometimes I do want to use a script because of the swooshes, just the swoosh vibe. And sometimes there's too many swooshes. There's too many curves. And I don't like it. And I get overwhelmed and they're too thin, but this one has a nice thickness to it with some swoosh. And that is my most, that is the, the technical answer to why I like this font. Let's move on. Avant Garde by Monotype. This is a font that you might recognize as well. If you've ever seen this A, you've seen this A, this A right here, you know this A. You've seen it and you've wondered, what font is this? Well, it's Avant Garde. Also, you could find this on Adobe fonts. You could also find, you could also find Brush Script on Adobe fonts. I will tell you the part of the video where you need to buy the individual license. But right now, they're all Adobe fonts if you subscribe it. Or you could get them in other means that I don't know how to do that. I'm not saying that you should do that, but you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. But Avant Garde was, it was actually designed by Herb Lubolin. I think that's how you pronounce the name. It looks like Lublolin, but it's actually pronounced Lubolin. And, I'm, and I thought, was, what is that? What, how is, what is that even, what? And I was like, what? But that is actually how it's pronounced. He designed it, he co-designed it, and he uses it a lot in his work. That's why, that's how I found this font because I was looking at a lot of Herb's work because I like his design. And this font is just really great at giving that, that vintage feel. That's, all, that's how best I can describe it. The most iconic part of this font is that there's so many alternate glyphs. You could tell by the A, the A is like, the A is like, eh. it could also do like, eh. It could do that, but that, that again, but I'm very technical. I'm a very technical graphic designer. That is what we call in the biz, an alternate glyph where the, the letter goes eh, eh, 
But there is a lot of alternate glyphs, which is also the strength and weakness of this font is that sometimes you use the font and you're like, whoa, this is awesome. There's so many glyphs. And then you start using all of them. And then at some point there's too many of them and you get overwhelmed and it looks kind of tacky because there's too many alternate glyphs. So you really need to have a fine balance when you're using this font. Whenever I've used this font, I've actually never used the alternate glyphs that much because just the normal style, but it's good for titles. So if you want to use this font, go ahead, avant-garde. Two thumbs up for avant-garde. All right, now we're getting to the top three that I've been using a lot lately. The next one is Trade Gothic Next, which is also by Monotype. The reason why I like Trade Gothic Next is it evokes a feeling of, again, a vintage feel, but in a specific context where it is a font that you would see in a liminal space, like a sign for a liminal space. That's like the best thing I could describe it. That's why I use it a lot. I was, when I was looking for a font that was compressed and it looks like it belongs on the railroad, on the railroad, I was looking for a font that it looks like it would belong in a railroad like signage or around that era where all of, where people still use trains a lot. Like it would be a, a, a font that would be used for a random sign or a bag of grain or something like that. I wanted to find a workhorse font that was used a lot back in the day that they would just slap it on everything. And what I really like about it is that there's two condensed fonts. There's the, the compressed and the condensed. And I just like how it's so normal. I like, I like a normal font. You know, you know what I mean about normal? Like, and this goes with brush script that it's just a normal font that you would see in the wild. That is what I enjoy because I don't know. I feel like if I use the font, I think it gives the viewer some familiarity with the font. Like it gives a nice, it, it's very inviting because you've seen this font before and it doesn't feel foreign. You know, it doesn't feel too fancy or too weird. That's why I like it. It just feels very neutral and in neutral that isn't Helvetica. That's why I don't really use Helvetica. It's because it's too, it's too much actually. You see it too much. Uh, that's why I like using Trade Gothic Next or Arial. These are the two fonts that could be interchangeable. Arial Narrow, I like that. That should be in this list. Shout, special shout outs to Arial Narrow. The next one I'm kind of cheating because it's three fonts actually, three different fonts from the same type studio, type foundry. Is that the proper term? But it is, Ozik, New Form Sans, and Rocco by New Form Type. I have been a long time fan of New Form Type. And these fonts I've used over the years that they've come out, especially Ozik. I remember Ozik, the Ozik E. Can I just say, I love the Ozik E. Like, look at this E. It's so cute. And now there's Ozik Soft. I love it. These fonts have a really quirky character to them. And Rocco has this nice lowercase r. Like the lowercase r, like next to an o. Oh my God, so good. And honestly, whenever I try using them, I, 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 get, I get scared. I get too overwhelmed. I'll, I've also used New Form Sans. New Form Sans is more of, my, of the workhorse font. It's kind of like Futura, but a little bit more quirky. And I have this bad habit of using Futura too much because I'm a creature of habit. It's just a habit and it's kind of like my trademark, but I've been trying to branch out more. And New Form Sans is my best, my best friend right now because it's, it's, it's like Futura, but not really. <laughs> I just really like New Form Type. I've been a fan since day one. Eric knows that I've been a fan and I will forever be a new form stan. New form type, go get, go get. I bought all three of them. <laughs> this is not even sponsored. I bought all three of these over the years. Day one, day one, I buy them because there's a discount and two, I really want to use them. You're sporting like independent type designers and two, people always want to find fonts that look different and you know, People like to be unique, right? And if you be using the ones that aren't on Adobe fonts, you're already ahead of the uniqueness game. So if you really want to make your designs look really different from most designs, is to go look for independent type uh, designers and just buy their fonts, buy their licenses. You know, you gotta support them. Like the amount of money I've made with these fonts, it was worth it. 
and they give you a license, it's crazy. Like you get the license, you can use it for whatever and then you make money off of it and it just pays itself. It just pays itself and you could write it off. You could write off, like I buy fonts every year and I just write it off. They're basically free fonts, it's free money guys. Guys, when you do your tax, it's a write off. It just means it's free. That's what write off means, right? And last but not least, probably my most used font of 2023 other than Futura. It goes to VC Garamon Condense. Here's how I found VC Garamon Condense. I was on the lookout for a Garamon that was condensed. It's really hard to find a Garamon that looks condensed because it is a like Garamon Condense. A lot of people use Apple Garamon, but I feel like it's so overused that I didn't want to use Apple Garamon. And there's no, and the only reason why people use Apple Garamon is because it's the only Garamon that's like widely available that is a condensed version of Garamon. And since like the whole 70s, 80s vintage editorial like trend blew up, people have been using it to death. I've a lot of people are trying to find that nice condensed Garamond and there's just, there's no, there, nobody's making it for some reasons because everyone's just getting Apple Garamond. And you know that Apple Garamond isn't even legally available. You can't even buy it. I don't even know who leaked the font. There has to be somebody who did it and you are to blame for it. it's over you. I just wanted to find a Garamond that was, that had a commercial license. I sell my stuff. I sell my prints a lot and I want to be able and I want to make sure that every font that I use, I have the commercial rights to because I don't want to fuck over the font, the font designers. So that's why I, I think it's very important. I think you guys need to pay your type designers. Really, I want you guys to spend money to people, to actual people that for sure will get the money. Like, I don't know how much people who license their stuff to Adobe gets, but I think it's just cool to, you know, give money to Thai foundries. I don't know. Maybe it's just me that likes spending fonts. Like you could probably find it for free somehow, but I feel like it's kind of slimy to, to do that to the, the really small ones. But anyways, that's a little bit of a tangent. But when I found VC Garamond Condense, I was like, oh, this is the perfect font for me. Uh, it was exactly what I was looking for when the bold, the bold, bold, like the bold version, the bold version of VC Garamond Condense is so nice. It's the right amount of condense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I use it a lot in my Instagram reels. It is usually my subtitle font. They actually just recently came out with the italicized versions of this. And it was a free update for people who already bought the font, which is great. See, I'm telling you, go buy these fonts. Actually, if you buy the fonts, you could actually buy fonts in early access. You can get the early versions. I know even new form type did this. You can buy the early versions and then you get free updates pretty much if you buy the early versions. You just get in, you just get in at the at the ground level before anyone even knows about the font. It's VC Garamon Condense, go get it. The links for this and new form uh, type will be in the description. Go support independent type foundries. Yeah, that is all the top five fonts I've been using a lot. Hopefully that's that helped because you guys love to ask me what font I'm using. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for another day of Design Miss. Day 11, guys. Day 11, let's go. So I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Use these fonts. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, 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 bye.